Welcome, everyone, to another episode of The Journey Through Apostolic Succession. In Scripture, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Whoever knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. From this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Here, in the Word of God, us refers to the apostles and elders chosen by the Holy Church. It reiterates the truth that we ought to be in spiritual communion with our fathers and elders of the Church and receive the spiritual guidance to prevent from erring. And so today, we get to know about our 73rd Pope in apostolic succession, Pope Theodore I, who succeeded Pope John IV. Theodore I was of great descent from Jerusalem, whose father, Theodore, had been a bishop in the city of Jerusalem. He was among the many Syrian clergy who fled to Rome following the Muslim conquest of the Levant. Some interesting facts. In 640 AD, Theodore became a cardinal deacon. It was Pope John IV who elevated Theodore to the status of full cardinal. Theodore I was consecrated on November 24, 642 AD as the successor to Pope John IV. His papacy ended with his death on May 14, 649 AD. Theodore was widely admired for his generosity in helping the poor. As mentioned before, most of Theodore I's pontificate was spent in combating monothelitism, a doctrine that continued to find favor in the East. During his time, Theodore also refused to recognize the uncanonically installed ecumenical patriarch, Paul of Constantinople. The ecumenical patriarch is the Archbishop of Constantinople, the spiritual leader of Orthodox Christians worldwide. Both Paul and his predecessor, Pyrrhus I, had relapsed into monothelitism, for which Theodore excommunicated Pyrrhus in 648 and deposed Paul in 649. We can see Theodore was compassionate to the poor, but at the same time stood strong to defend the Church and its truth. Theodore planned the Lateran Council of 649 to condemn the Ephesus, a letter published in 638 by the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius, which defined monothelitism as the official imperial form of Christianity. But Theodore died before he could convene the council. The incomplete mission was taken over by his successor Pope Martin I. On his death, this energetic pontiff, who was good to the poor of Rome and a benefactor of its churches, was buried in St. Peter's on the 14th of May, 649. His feast day in the Eastern Orthodox Church is on the 18th of May. That's all for today. Thank you all for listening, and please stay tuned for our next episode. Please like, share, and spread the word to everyone around you. For Christ and for His Church, God bless you all.